All these things are there, and so Joseph was able to understand the world of the dreams. And that is an important concept. He brought this information to the land of Egypt, where they had certain strange practices, but they didn't have the truth. They had become a great empire that was huge, but they had done so by making strange alliances with different races. Um, perhaps they were benevolent of the races and God-fearing, perhaps not. But by the incessant display in the Egyptian culture of numerous pagan rituals and sacrifices and statues, you'd actually have to be pretty uh, brain dead not to see the change of where, again, we've had this massive turn towards not believing in the one true God. But Joseph comes, and because of his wisdom and knowledge of the truth, is able to understand and communicate with the celestial world in his sleep and interpret what these images are that people get from the skies given to him by the Lord, he is able to advise the king of future events. Future events, very important, because when we later on talk about modern day understanding of jinn or alien technology and uh, modern day prophets communicating with the jinn and talking about time in the future, it'll be very important to see that this idea that believers can become pure of heart and gain knowledge about the unseen world through their dreams, if they're pure of faith, is there as a clear example from Joseph. And so a lot of the Eastern philosophies, like we said, the truth and falsehood gets mixed up in the method of misinformation, right? That's the system. It's always misinformation. Satan and his minions, whether they are men or any of the other races, those who are working on the side of evil are always about what? Confusing the majority of mankind. Whereas all of the prophets were always about what? Giving the pure knowledge, wanting nothing in return. Because when you give pure, pure knowledge and pure, pure truth, it increases the light of others and yourself and thereby fuels the power of the faith and the ability of all believers. But man, it's a struggle. It's a struggle of mankind. It's the struggle of our race. And so Joseph had this ability, and so he was given this great status. And the brothers of Joseph all were able to establish themselves in one of the greatest empires as the believing brothers in a disbelieving empire. And so what happened? The situation got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse to the point where anybody who believed in the Lord Most High was treated as the lowest of the low. And the children of Jacob and the tribes were slaves to the pharaohs and the people who were working with the alien races. Now they had built huge structures and temples and pyramids and today the knowledge is clearly there that they were able to understand knowledge from the skies and of the alien races and able to manipulate the position and have technology that was able to move boulders and things that were phenomenal that mankind without the power of alien technology would not be able to do and the fact that uh, people don't recognize that Muslims have been saying that these things were uh, done by jinns is uh, such a ludicrous thing but anyway Muslims have been trying to explain this to you that jinns or the other interdimensional beings or the alien races however you want to turn them have been working with the Egyptians and that's how we have the pyramid structures that we have there and they're specifically based on constellations in the skies because one of the things that the aliens always do is trick mankind into believing some of the powers of the stars as we saw Ibrahim in his example was trying to teach us not to do that but we have the story of Joseph and him telling the Pharaoh of the dreams and the sons of Jacob and the tribes of Israel 
but a noble, noble bloodline, all connected back through the lineage of Jacob and Isaac and Abraham, directly on the faith. But like I said, the story gets bad. And as time progresses, somehow things shift, and the power of the pagans and the side of disbelief in the one true Lord gets to be so severe that anybody who believes in the one true Lord is turned into a slave. And we find the Jews, as we call them today, being kept in bondage until a point where God decides, yes, it's time to send another messenger with the truth. And as the story always goes, <sighs> How does God do it every time? How does God do it every time? Oh, God works so mysterious, and he's the Lord Most High, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so the stories are there, and I don't know why nobody pays attention, and I'm trying to give it to you and show you every time how obviously funky the reality is of being so blatantly true. So, the situations of the true believers at this time called the children of Israel are so royally fracked once again.